Yo, what is up you guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Benji and in today's video we're going to go over my watch list for the next week as well as go over some plays and trades that I'm looking to make. So first, one of the top priorities over this next week is going to be to watch Apple. Apple is sitting at just under $500 as of this moment. The split is going to happen on Friday after the close so there is going to be some moves with Apple this week for sure. I currently own just over 39 shares of Apple as of this moment, and I will be looking to add more throughout this next week. If there is a pretty major pullback for some weird reason, I'll be looking to add a lot more, but either way, I will be looking to add a few shares here and there over this next week. We do have a big option trade going on right now with Apple. I did sell a put as of last week for a $465 strike price that expires this next Friday, the same day as the split actually. And this trade is going pretty well so far. We did earn $885 of premium for doing so. And the trade is losing value as of the moment because Apple has just kept on going up in price. So what I'll probably end up doing on Monday is buy to close this for hopefully somewhere around $100 and then go ahead and just sell another put on Apple, maybe a little bit further out, maybe August 28th or maybe September 4th, which would be the next Friday after that. What I'll likely want to do is once again, sell a put really close to where the share price is to earn some crazy premium, just because I do want to add more Apple to my portfolio anyways. I don't really mind overpaying for Apple because I do feel like it is going to keep going up in price over the long term. Um, and if I am able to earn some crazy premium for doing so, I'd be happy with that. As far as other stocks that I am going to be looking to add to the portfolio, I am going to be looking to add some higher yielders. If you guys did watch my last video, we went over my entire portfolio. We went over where it's sitting, how much of a dividend yield I am earning with my overall portfolio as of this moment with all my holdings all put together, averaged out. And we currently are earning just over 4% of a dividend yield, which is pretty good. I'm very happy with that, but I do want to try to get it up a little bit higher. And although it's never good to make investments just off of a high yield, um, I learned it the hard way when I started this portfolio because I was just looking at dividend yields when I started to build up this portfolio around a year ago. And I ended up with some pretty low quality companies that I have been selling off slash will continue to sell off. But when it comes to stocks like AT&T, I currently own just over $12,000 with AT&T in my portfolio. And I do want AT&T, for example, to be a pretty big percentage of my overall portfolio. AT&T is yielding around 7% right now. So, so when it comes to a stock like AT&T, I already have been planning on adding more of it to my portfolio anyways. And just for the fact that I went over the entire portfolio review, I kind of have a little bit different of a strategy. I want to raise my yield a little bit and AT&T being a high yielder because the price is down pretty low still. I think I will be adding a lot more AT&T to my portfolio this week. Maybe we will add around 100 shares more AT&T this week, especially if it does dip down in price. But even at these prices, I feel like that's a decently fair price for AT&T. It doesn't really move up or down all that much it really trades more like a bond for the most part and it kind of trades sideways but with that nice yield nice predictable dividends i do want to add some more of at&t for sure in the portfolio this week as far as some other purchases that I'm going to be looking to make this week, I do want to add more Visa to the portfolio. We did just buy one share as of last week, so we have a pretty small position as of right now. If it does dip down in price, I'll grab some more shares a bit more aggressively, but I will be adding more Visa this week. I also want to add a little bit more store capital. We're sitting at 63 shares of store capital. My goal is to get to 100 shares of store, so we will be adding more, especially while the price is down, just dollar cost averaging. We will be adding more AT&T. Like I said, I do want to raise my overall position with AT&T to around 5% of this portfolio. Um, if not even higher, honestly, I'd be okay with even a little bit higher than that. So we will be adding more AT&T, especially because it is yielding almost 7%. So that will raise my overall portfolio yield, which is definitely what I like to see. I will also be adding more Cisco if it does stay down in price. We are pretty much even, which is nice to see. Because at one point a few weeks back, we were sitting at quite a loss with Cisco. So we're only down $161 right now. Still some room to dollar cost average. I also do want to get to 100 shares of Cisco because then I can sell calls on Cisco. Well, we do hold on to it for the long term, hopefully. Then another one that I've been thinking of adding more shares of is EPD, Enterprise Products. I have heard a lot of you guys in the comments saying that I should keep this one, that I should add even more shares of it. Are you guys holding Enterprise Products currently? At the price that it's at right now at $18, I mean, it does seem like a pretty good deal. It is also a pretty high yielder. So let me know down below if you guys think I should add more Enterprise Products. I was thinking about maybe getting rid of it because I do already own a lot of other stock in that sector. But then other than that, I will be trying to get to 100 shares of Intel as well so I can start selling calls. Intel is another stock that has been beat up in price lately, but we have been doing a good job of dollar cost averaging. We're pretty close to the average cost to the stock price, so that's pretty good. Considering Intel did lose quite a bit of value over the last few weeks, but we will be trying to add a little bit more Intel to the portfolio as well. And then finally, I probably will be trying to add a little bit more Pembina Pipeline. We're currently at 300 shares of Pembina Pipeline, but it's a pretty cheap stock at $26.25 per share. If it does dip down in price, I'll probably add some more. If it goes up in price, I likely won't. We are sitting pretty red on this one. We're down over $1,300 as of this moment, but Pembina is a stock that has been paying out dividends for quite some time. Every single month. It does have that monthly payout security and I might add some more if the price is right.
So those are just some of the plays and some of the buys that I'm looking to make over the next week, you guys. Of course, it's probably gonna be another crazy week in the stock market, so a lot will change. Market is sitting up pretty high right now, so I do feel like we might have a small little pullback at some time here. But at the same time, who really knows? There's stock splits going on, which are gonna be very exciting to see. I'm really curious to see what Apple and Tesla do over this next week because their splits are coming up. But I want to hear from you guys. What stocks are you guys watching this week? What plays are you looking to make? Whether it's options trading, whether it's new buys, whether it's selling. Let me know down below in the comments. But real quick before I go, you guys, let's go over some viewer questions and comments. If you guys ever do have any questions or comments for me, leave them down below. It could be about investing, business, real estate, anything at all. Just leave something down below. And the first one is from Andrew. What is your strategy for increasing the yield going to be? So I am content with my yield right now, my overall portfolio yield being over 4%. I think that's very decent, obviously, um, but I do have some ideas to make it a little bit higher. And as I said, you guys really be careful when you are chasing yield, uh, you can get into some trouble and I have definitely got into some trouble by doing so. I hold a lot of different stocks in this portfolio that are high yielders or they were high yielders, but they really are garbage stocks and I am trying to get rid of them as well as I already have sold off quite a few that were in that category. So never chase yield just for the yield, of course. But that being said, there are also stocks out there that are quality stocks but still do have a pretty high dividend yield stocks like at t stocks like realty income stocks like verizon just to name a few stocks like pimby to pipeline even they definitely are out there and what i'll be doing is trying to find opportunities to grab more of those types of stocks um, for good prices of course when of course it makes sense not only buying them for the yield of course again you guys but just buying them because they are quality businesses they you know have a lot to offer and they do happen to be high yielders so that's the way that i'm going to try to raise the yield overall in the portfolio the next one is from Tariq. Apple has been on a tear lately, but do you ever see Apple hitting $1,000? I picked this one because I really do want to hear your guys' opinion on it. Apple is almost at $500 per share right now, of course, pre-split. So, of course, it is going to drop when the stock does split in a week. But I really want to hear from you guys. What do you think Apple is going to be trading at right before the split? Um, it is hard to say, but I really do think that Apple probably will continue to go up over this next week just because the split is coming up. Again, it would make perfect sense if it did sell off a little bit because I do think that it is at a really, really crazy price right now. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think Apple is going to hit at the top price pre split as well as post split what do you guys think the price is going to be at pretty consistently and finally the last one is from texas have you considered checking out fundrise real estate investing app yes i have looked into fundrise actually pretty extensively in the past fundrise is a reit you basically give them money you lock up your money for a set amount of time i think it is and then they pretty much give you out disbursements or you can like reinvest the disbursements i mean it's pretty much the same thing as buying a reit like how we do on the stock market the only difference is when you invest into fundrise i feel like your money is a little bit less liquid i think you can pull out your money early within like a certain range or something but um they might penalize you or something where if you just invest into a company like realty income that owns super super high quality companies i mean you buy a stock of real estate income for 61 dollars and five cents right now and as long as you buy this and as long as you buy the share before the next dividend date you are already in line to get paid out a dividend like right away as well as you can then go ahead and sell the stock whenever you want so it's super super liquid fundrise is not a program that'd be right for me honestly and i don't see why you wouldn't just invest into high quality reits um, on the stock market considering it's a lot more liquid um, than investing into fundrise and having to go through that whole process uh, but i have also heard that people have made some decent money from fundrise as far as some decent returns go um, but it, when it comes to fundrise or any of those other like private funds like that it's not really for me i'd much rather just put my money into high quality reits on the stock market but that is going to do it for today's video you guys thank you so much as always for stopping by please please drop a like on this video if you guys did like this video leave a comment or question down below and i'll answer a few more in tomorrow's video also, if you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe to follow along with the journey. We have a crazy, crazy week coming up in the stock market. We have tons of plays going on right now. You guys are not going to want to miss a thing. And finally, you guys, we do have a Discord server dedicated to investing. We have day traders in here. We have option traders, tons and tons of smart people, all giving plays, tips, and tricks. So if you guys want to join the Discord, it's free to join. The link is down below in my description. We'll see you guys in there. Thank you guys again for stopping by, and we'll see you in tomorrow's video.